So this video is an introduction to plastics or polymers as they're properly termed. Um, now the majority of plastics obviously come from uh, oil based um, uh, sources and are effectively hydrocarbons consisting of hydrogen and carbon uh, but many sort of uh, sort of natural plastics are becoming popular now obviously to improve the uh, longevity or um, sustainability of uh, uh, producing products um, not relying on oil uh, using sources such as cornstarch and things like this um, now plastics are obviously very popular nowadays because now they've got um, uh, manufacturing techniques to actually produce these things like injection molding you can now produce very complicated shapes um, that have a lot of the properties of you know uh, metals and things like this where they they might have been used but obviously you get a lot of uh, benefits from using plastics or polymers and these are things like you know how light they can be the fact that you can add color and pigmentation the the requirement well the, the lowered requirement to to finish the product because obviously the, the mold it can allow for self finishing um, and obviously they are obviously electrical and thermal insulators which uh, metal is not so an example they uh, talk about in the AQA book is obviously a kettle and obviously you can s imagine all the benefits that you get from this I mean you, you don't want a particularly heavy kettle perhaps you might want to produce uh, a kettle in a range of different color ways to suit the uh, person's kitchen um, and obviously some of the complexity of the the shape um, if you want to make the product more ergonomic or more tactile you can obviously do this and obviously integrating things like elastomers as well as sort of thermoplastics in can obviously improve the sort of general feel of the product and things like this as well so as I said pr plastics mostly come from um, uh, oil as a source but obviously there are sort of plastics uh, coming from sort of um, semi-synthetic polymers uh, so one example would be like cellulose um, and or cellulose acetate which obviously comes from sort of uh, plant fibers and is mixed with um, acetic acid to produce um, cellulose acetate and an example of the use of uh, cellulose acetate is OHP these are the overhead projector slides that people write on you know prior to the use of uh, overhead projectors in the more sort of electronic sense another example of a, a product coming from a sort of a regenerate source or a sort of a semi synthetic source would be casein now this is actually coming from milk as a, a, a source uh, which seems unusual but has always been used for, for many many years in the manufacture of buttons you know to uh, attach a garment together and things like this um, so as I said but most uh, plastics obviously come from sort of coal oil and gas as, as the sources to create um, uh, thermo thermoplastics or plastics and um, it's a process called thermal cracking now there are three general types of plastics that are used okay the first I've discussed before is thermoplastics now the the thing with thermoplastics is they're probably used for the widest um, range of products and the benefit of thermoplastics is they can be um, heated and softened uh, with the use of heat and this becomes you know improves their plasticity and malleability so you can form them into shapes however if they are heated again they will soften and can be formed again okay and as I said these these produce many many products um, from from plastics okay the other main group of plastics out of the three is thermosetting plastics now these differ from uh, thermoplastics they're not quite as um, uh, flexible in terms of how you can manufacture these okay so they're quite limited in terms of the products that you can make okay and this is probably because they undergo a chemical change once they're first formed and therefore they become permanently ri rigid now this has benefits obviously now something like a electrical light switch for example if made from a thermoset plastic it basically means that if there is an electrical failure or something or heat is built up inside you know the the, the polymer is not going to melt and it's not going to burn as, you, as you'd find with maybe a thermoplastic and it's got a slightly higher um, tolerance to heat than many thermoplastics do however they obviously do have thermoplastics that have higher uh, heat tolerances but this is probably one of the main uses for thermosetting plastics now the other key sort of group out of the three is elastomers okay elastomers are sometimes called rubbers um, and they're obviously you know if you think about rubber as a material it's kind of flexible it uh, has uh, sort of uh, an ability to return to its shape once you've applied force to it and it's kind of uh, stretchy and things like this now elastomers are obviously very useful uh, nowadays because if you want that sort of tactile feel or you want to have 
um, a product that has a level of elasticity to it, these are quite good. So an example of this would be, for example, grips on products, uh, something like maybe a toothbrush or something like that, which we've discussed in uh, an A2 case study. Okay, these are good um, reasons why you might use an elastomer. Okay, and they can be obviously joined with uh, thermoplastics within the um, injection molding process through a process called over molding or perhaps uh, dual shot injection molding where you're injecting two different plastics within the same mold. Now, plastics obviously have a multitude of different properties and there's many many different plastics and you choose plastics based on their individual properties. However, many plastics offer um, a, a set of properties that are you know um, generic to them all they they all have these sort of properties okay now one of these is that plastics are good insulators of electricity and obviously of heat thermal insulators as well okay another example is they have a good strength to weight ratio now it doesn't mean that you know a plastic can be really really strong like uh, steel is very strong okay but it means that for a very small quantity of the plastic it's very very strong compared to how much it weighs now if you think of uh, casings for electrical products they're actually quite stiff and they're actually quite strong but if you look at the thickness of the product it's actually very thin another example might be something like if you compare it to say uh, a tin foil or something like this if you have a sheet of foil made from maybe aluminium you could basically quite easily tear it so the sheer strength of that product is very very low however if you had a very thin sheet of plastic maybe PVC and you was trying to tear that the shear strength is much much stronger and it's obviously probably a product that weighs a lot less as well okay so it has lots of strength to weight uh, benefits for these sort of products so you can use quite a small amount of material but create um, a material that is strong enough to, to produce you know a range of properties required for the products that you're actually producing now other benefits is they have good uh, atmospheric and chemical corrosion resistance so you know um, if you think about plastics if we're making a product that's going to go outside it's going to be subjected to rain um, if we're thinking about something that is going to be used as a, a, a washing tool maybe a, a washing up brush or something like this we might have to use it with bleach we might have to use it with other chemicals okay and plastics are very good because they can resist these sort of uh, chemicals and um, obviously water and to an extent uh, oxidation and sunlight as well through the use of uh, um, ad additives that are added into the plastic process. Now the other benefit although you could say perhaps it's a, a, a deficit with the example of thermoplastics is they have quite low melting uh, temperatures. Now this is going to make it then very easy for them to be molded and processed through injection molding and things like this. Generally they are lightweight, okay, this obviously relates to their strength to rate ratio as well, but they are lightweight for the amount that they're going to be used, and they can be self-coloured, they can come in opaque, as in uh, they don't let any light through, translucent, letting some light, or transparent, like completely clear, so, you know, uh, by adding colours into the actual process when you're injection moulding or you're rotational moulding or something like this, you can produce a whole range of different colours to suit different needs, okay. Now, the other advantage of plastics, similar to kind of metals in the way that you can treat metals with heat to kind of make them stronger or have different uh, properties, okay? Plastics can be improved by adding certain things in, okay? So what we could do, for example, is if we wanted to bulk up the amount of plastic without using lots of costly uh, polymer granules, is we can use fillers, okay? So we could use things like um, sawdust, wood flour, crushed stones or something like this and these could produ produce uh, you know more product or increase things like the strength or the hardness of the polymer or remove the brittleness so it doesn't sort of uh, snap as easily under sort of tensile strength or something like this you can add flame retardants okay so this can stop the um, plastic being so easy to combust or ignite okay so this could be helpful if you was making perhaps um, cushions for an upholstery um, product or like a seat or a cushion or something like this and it would stop the, uh, the thing being so easy to, to ignite. Um, Anti-static agents can be included to stop the build up of electricity. I mean if, if you've ever walked around in, in your lounge with uh, a certain type of shoes on you might find that you build up static electricity and you know this, this can be quite inconvenient and can cause problems uh, in various different ways. Uh, plasticizers can be added so obviously plastic, plasticity of a, a, a uh, um, a material 
is its ability to flow, okay, especially when you're molding or something like this. And it also uh, is going to reduce the, the amount of temperature you're going to need to allow it to be molded easily. And it might also make the product less brittle, so less likely to sort of snap under pressure and things like this. You can also add things called stabilizers, okay, and this could stop the product being so easily broken down or degraded um, by things like ultraviolet light, okay, because obviously you wouldn't want a plastic product if it's going to be used outside to be degraded so easily or something perhaps that's going to be placed near a window because obviously this could make the product prone to being more brittle or to actually discolour the product over time. Okay, now there's obviously many many applications for plastics, okay. And you know this very much depends on exactly what you're doing, okay? But some examples would be sort of using PET, for example, polyethyl terephthalate, okay, to extend the shelf life of carbonated drinks, okay, because they're less permeable than, than some other polymers used as PVCs and things like this, okay? But obviously, being thermoplastics, um, they just have such a wide range of these different properties and. Um, now they're starting to use them more um, because they can um, change the properties so much for very, uh, very varied and different applications. Okay, now most plastics, as we said, came from oil. Okay, and one of the huge problems with using oil is obviously it's a finite resource; it's running out. But obviously, it also um, has an impact on the planet. So. Um, um, the, the production in this way is, is eventually these oils are going to run out and, and make this a problem, okay? So a lot of research is going into obviously using biodegradable plastics and the other benefit of using biodegradable plastics that come from natural sources is they will degrade and rot down over time whereas a standard oil based plastic might last for example 100 years if left on a landfill site and this landfill will build up over years and, and then becomes another environmental problem. Okay. Now the applications uh, for biodegradable plastics obviously is very good for things like packaging. So if we think shopping bags, um, drinks bottles, uh, disposable pots that you might use in the garden to pot um, plants and things like this, and things like medical products, uh, I, I don't know, like um, uh, garments and stuff or wound dressings where you want the product to be used once and then to be disposed. because. What you don't want is to use the product once, throw it away, and then it actually can't degrade down and it sits on landfill or something like this. Whereas biodegradable products that often come from renewable sources, things like starch and uh, like from wheat, corn, and potatoes and things like this, can make things like, for example, a capsule for medicine. So it will degrade within your your mouth or your stomach or something like this. Or it could make you know simple packaging so that it will last for the, the shelf life or the intended life of the product and then when disposed it will degrade very quickly. Okay? Now one type of polymer that's used um, from a natural resource is the polylactides or PLA as they're often uh, concerned and they have similar properties to polyethylene and polypropylene and can be processed in similar ways to normal thermoplastics. Okay? Another use of PLA quite recently is as a support structure for 3D printing. So it can be produced to support the 3D print as it's being printed and then quite easily be picked off or degraded by the use of sort of hot water to um, take it off of the thing. Okay? Other biodegradable uh, products okay, can also be made um, from um, uh, polyhydroxy alkanoate or PHA, okay, and this is often termed or commercially as biopole, okay, and this plastic actually comes from bacteria that's grown in uh, cultures, and the most popular type of uh, polymer, however, used at the moment is PHB. So if you remember PHAs and PHBs as types of biodegradable plastics, this is useful, okay. Now, variations of this polymer, the PHB, polybeta hydroxybutyrate, are used in packaging as it has similar properties to polypropylene, okay, and it has lots and lots of applications, things like um, films, screws, bone plates, if you think about using in the, the sort of medical sense, okay. However, they're very stable in certain uh, environments, but they will effectively break down if they're in contact with uh, microorganisms in the soil, so therefore they can kind of be degraded over time, biodegradable over time. Okay? Another way that these polymers can be degraded in certain senses uh, are what considered to be oxo-degradable uh, polymers, oxo being short 
effectively for oxygen. So it just means that it's going to speed up the degradation time as well. So uh, a polymer that's oxo-degradable might degrade in less than five years, as opposed to a oil-based polymer, which may take a hundred years to degrade. Okay, now. Existing polymers can also be helped to break down over a shorter period of time by adding what's called bio batch. Okay, so you can add bio batch to polyethylene, polypropylene, polyvinyl chloride, PET, polyethyl terephthalate, or even polystyrene. Okay, and it's going to mean again that these can be broken down over time, they are going to degrade, and they're not going to fill up on landfill.